There is a saying that don't set yourself on fire to keep someone else warm comes from ancient Stoic wisdom and is a powerful reminder of how important it is to balance kindness with self-care. However, in today's rush to be seen as good and always be the one who gives, many people have turned the good act of kindness into a habit that hurts themselves. We are told to go above and beyond and push our limits for the sake of others, but at what cost? The truth is that too much kindness hurts us. Many people have lost their way and are giving so much of themselves that they feel empty, unloved and burned out. It's a modern tragedy where good intentions lead to bad results. Stoicism teaches us a different way to be giving without losing ourselves a way to be kind to others while also being kind to ourselves. It teaches us the art of balanced generosity, which means making sure our actions make other people's lives better while also protecting our own. This video shows how stoic ideas can help you set healthy limits so that your kindness fills you up instead of draining you. Let's talk about how to give without losing love be there for others without disappearing from our own lives and be generous without hurting others. Join us as we walk the fine line between self-preservation and kindness using the wisdom of Stoicism to guide us. Number one, don't set yourself on fire. Warned us not to fall into the trap of being too kind to others. Imagine being someone who always jumps to help others and never says no. It's like giving away pieces of yourself until there's nothing left. You become the person who's always there for others. But when you look around, you find yourself standing alone in your time of need. It's not just about being kind. It's about being selfless. One neighboring gardener took great care of their own garden, while the other, even though they had their own plot, often tended to everyone else's gardens. The diligent gardener knew how important it was to take care of themselves and gave their garden the right amount of attention and resources, which led to a vibrant and flourishing space. This gardener's plot not only brought them joy, but also provided extra food for others. In their eagerness to help others, they forgot about their own needs, leaving both their garden and themselves empty. Let this serve as a reminder. Before you jump into helping others, ask yourself, is this help sustainable? Am I protecting my well-being? The ancient Stoics would encourage us to practice Stoicism by setting healthy boundaries and ensuring that in our quest to be kind, we do not forget to be kind to ourselves. After all, you can't pour from an empty cup in Stoicism. The aim is to maintain your inner peace and integrity while contributing positively to the lives of others, ensuring a balanced and fulfilling life for both you and those you wish to help. In a figurative sense, setting yourself on fire means putting yourself in dangerous or harmful situations that could have bad results. This can include anything from acting in ways that hurt yourself to making decisions on the spur of the moment. To keep from setting yourself on fire, remember these five important things. Being self-aware means knowing your triggers, flaws and limits. Know when you're in a situation that could make you move without thinking or do something bad. Emotional regulation. Figure out how to handle your feelings well. Deep breathing being aware or talking to a trusted friend or therapist are all things you can do when you feel overwhelmed. Putting limits on. Set clear limits for yourself in both your personal and work life. Get good at saying no to things that don't fit with your values or goals and hang out with people who do the same. Asking for help. If you need it, don't be afraid to ask for it. Whether you talk to a therapist, a guide, or a friend for advice, having a support system can help you see things from a different point of view and give you direction. Setting goals and making plans. Make goals that you can actually reach and a plan for how you will do it. Break down big goals into smaller steps. 
that you can handle and enjoy the little wins along the way. Having a goal or sense of direction can help you stay on track and resist temptations or distractions that could make you do something bad for yourself. Remember that for your health and long-term success, you need to take care of yourself and make smart decisions. Don't set yourself on fire because of short-term urges or stresses. Number two, there is a time limit on reciprocity. When you look back at history, it's interesting to see how much service royalty expected from personal cleanliness to dressing. Fast forward to now and it's clear that people still expect a lot from us, often asking for favors they could easily do themselves. Stoicism sheds light on this and teaches us how important it is to set limits and accept balance. This old philosophy helps us find our way through the sea of never-ending requests so we can act with purpose and keep our mental health. Stoicism isn't about refusing help. It's about finding a balance so that we don't lose ourselves while helping others. For example, there was a touching story about a mother and her adult daughter living in a small town. The mother loved her daughter so much that she wouldn't let her take on her responsibilities. This went on until the mother died too soon, which surprisingly made the daughter more independent. This story shows an important lesson. Even if our goals are good, giving too much help can stop growth without meaning to. Marcus Aurelius, the Stoic Emperor, said in a reflection that a man's job is to stand straight, not for other people to hold him straight. This insight tells us to promote independence which will create a balance that is good for everyone. Zena, who had deep understanding of how people connect with each other, saw that someone who becomes your friend for the benefit will also stop being your friend for the benefit. This is a strong reminder to build relationships based on real ties instead of mere transactions. Friendship and support shouldn't depend on what we can give each other, but on mutual respect and understanding. Stoicism teaches us to value ourselves not for what we can do, but for who we are, which builds self-esteem and real relationships. Stoicism gives us the strength to be moderate and set limits to protect our own well-being, while still helping others in a genuine way. By putting our own needs first and responsibilities second, we not only stay true to ourselves and our values, but we also do more meaningful acts of kindness. This balanced approach to life and relationships helps us live a life of virtue and fulfillment as we deal with the demands of modern life. Let us remember that being mindful of our own needs is not selfishness, but a necessary act of self-care. One of the most important rules of human interaction is reciprocity which means trading things with others so that both parties gain. One important thing that is often forgotten, though, is how important timing is to the success of reciprocity. There are limits to how long you can reciprocate, just like in many other parts of life. Understanding this idea can make it a lot easier to deal with people in our personal and work lives. Here are five important things to think about. Timing is very important. It works best when reciprocity happens right away after a favor or gift has been given. Putting off reciprocity can lessen its effect and may even make the other person think you aren't serious or don't really appreciate them. Keeping the balance. In reciprocity, you give back after getting, but it's also important to keep the balance. When you overcompensate too quickly or too much, it can make the other person feel ood or uncomfortable in the relationship. On the other hand, not responding in a timely way could cause problems or even the loss of trust, building trust and relationships. When people reciprocate in a timely manner, it builds trust and makes relationships stronger. When friendly acts are quickly returned, it shows that you are paying attention you can be trusted, and you really want to keep the friendship going. On the other hand, this creates a good setting for working together. Avoiding exploitation. 
If you don't reciprocate within a fair amount of time, it might look like you're taking advantage of someone else's kindness. Because of this, relationships can get tense and future exchanges can go badly. People show they are honest and appreciate other people's work by sticking to the time limit on exchange. Adapting to the situation. Number three, requests that are received have no limits. When you look back at history, it's interesting to see how much service royalty expected, from personal cleanliness to dressing. Fast forward to now, and it's clear that people still expect a lot from us, often asking for favors they could easily do themselves. Stoicism sheds light on this and teaches us how important it is to set limits and accept balance. This old philosophy helps us find our way through the sea of never-ending requests so we can act with purpose and keep our mental health. Stoicism isn't about refusing help. It's about finding a balance so that we don't lose ourselves while helping others. For example, there was a touching story about a mother and her adult daughter living in a small town. The mother loved her daughter so much that she wouldn't let her take on her responsibilities. This went on until the mother died too soon, which surprisingly made the daughter more independent. This story shows an important lesson. Even if our goals are good, giving too much help can stop growth without meaning to. Marcus Aurelius, the Stoic Emperor, said in a reflection that a man's job is to stand straight not for other people to hold him straight. This insight tells us to promote independence, which will create a balance that is good for everyone. Sina, who had deep understanding of how people connect with each other, saw that someone who becomes your friend for the benefit will also stop being your friend for the benefit. This is a strong reminder to build relationships based on real ties instead of mere transactions. Friendship and support shouldn't depend on what we can give each other, but on mutual respect and understanding. Stoicism teaches us to value ourselves not for what we can do, but for who we are, which builds self-esteem and real relationships. Stoicism gives us the strength to be moderate and set limits to protect our own well-being while still helping others in a genuine way. By putting our own needs first and responsibilities second, we not only stay true to ourselves and our values, but we also do more meaningful acts of kindness. This balanced approach to life and relationships helps us live a life of virtue and fulfillment as we deal with the demands of modern life. Let us remember that being mindful of our own needs is not selfishness, but a necessary act of self-care. In a world where possibilities are endless, the thought of making an infinite number of requests can be both exciting and scary. We will look at the idea of accepting requests without any conditions in this lesson. We will find out how they can change things and how they can help us grow as individuals and as a group. Mindset shift. Have an attitude of wealth. Know that there are an infinite number of options open to you and that most of the time, the only thing that limits you is your mind. If you think about wealth, you make it easier for people to ask you for things and you can do them without any problems. Creativity. Unleashed. People are more creative when they can ask for anything. Step outside of what you've always thought and look for new ways to meet needs. Leave your ideas about what is possible out of the way and let your mind run wild. Collaborative Synergy Work together on projects to get the most out of the promise of endless requests. When you combine different skills, ideas and tools, you can get results that are much better than what you could have done on your own. Accept the power that comes from people working together to reach a common goal. Continuous learning and adaptation. When there are a lot of requests, learning turns into a trip that lasts a lifetime. Continue to be interested, flexible, and open to changing your ways when things change. Take on difficulties as chances to learn and grow, knowing that each new experience makes you smarter and better at what you do. Thoughts on ethics. 
When you have a lot of power, you also have a lot of duty. Being able to do amazing things without any boundaries can give us power, but it also makes us more aware of what is right and wrong. Think about how your actions affect other people and do your best to follow truth, honesty, and respect in everything you do. In conclusion, accepting requests that have no boundaries opens the door to endless possibilities and growth and innovation chances that have never been seen before. We can use the transformative power of limitless requests to make the future better for everyone by having an abundance attitude, encouraging creativity, working together, committing to continuous learning and upholding moral standards. Number four, being seen as fragile and treated as such. Stoicism teaches us a strong lesson about inner strength and self-control. It's about making a fortress inside ourselves by practicing self-control and setting clear boundaries that protect our personal space over time. Ironically, always going the extra mile for others can make you look weak. If you don't set firm boundaries, people who see your generosity not as a strength, but as an opportunity to take advantage of you, will be able to take advantage of you. This cycle of overextending ourselves and being exploited drains us, leaving us feeling undervalued and overworked. But as soon as we start to assertively say no, things change. We're no longer the go-to person for every request or demand. Cicero, a famous Stoic philosopher, said, what you think of yourself is much more important than what others think of you. By setting limits and practicing self-discipline, we not only protect our mental and emotional health, but we also command respect from those around us. Remember that knowing something is powerful. It's a statement of your worth and a sign of the respect you demand from the world. Being open to everyone often draws people who are looking help being left out when it's time to celebrate. It's a hard truth that your openness could keep you from sharing in moments of joy, relegating you to the role of the helper who isn't there for fun times. Even though it's painful, this discovery is an acid test for Stoics train their minds to see the real value of relationships by separating genuine connections from opportunistic ones. This makes us more careful about who we give our time and energy to. Did you know that setting boundaries, which is a core Stoic principle, not only improves our own health but also makes our relationships better? A strange but true fact about human behavior is that when we respect ourselves enough to say no, others often respect us more. This shows how powerful self-respect can be and how important it is to be careful in our relationships. Not only does following stoic advice keep us from getting burned out, but it also helps us build relationships that are mutually beneficial. Thank you for reading. If you found anything useful, please give it a thumbs up. To show your support, People are often labeled or seen through different views in society, and fragility is one of them. When someone is seen as weak and then treated as such, it can have a big impact on their self-esteem, relationships, and chances. This often happens because of biases, stereotypes, and misunderstandings that are spread by social rules and media portrayals. It is possible to make society more accepting and understanding though by knowing how complicated this problem is and taking steps to solve it. Identifying stereotypes. Be aware of the biases and stereotypes that come with being seen as weak. Some of these are negative ideas about someone's physical, emotional or mental strength based on their gender, age, race or condition. To challenge and break down these assumptions, it's important to understand them. Effects on how you see yourself. Look into what happens to your mind when you are treated as weak. People may take these thoughts and feelings about themselves personally, which can lead to feelings of not being good enough, self-doubt and low self-worth. This can make it harder to grow as a person and limit their goals and accomplishments. 
barriers to opportunities. Look at how being seen as fragile can make it harder to get things you want in life, like jobs, school, and social relationships. When someone is seen as weak, they may be discriminated against or treated badly, which can make it harder for them to get resources and grow personally and professionally. Getting people to understand and feel empathy. Encourage people and groups to understand and care about each other. To fight assumptions and build a culture of respect and openness. Encourage people to talk to each other, listen carefully and share their own experiences. People who have empathy can see past their first impressions of someone's weakness and respect all of their different strengths and abilities. Advocacy and empowerment push for changes and policies that make the system more equal and stop discrimination based on imagined weakness. Give people the tools they need to stand up for themselves, fight stereotypes and demand fair treatment and participation in all parts of society. To make changes that matter and last, people must work together and be united. In conclusion, it's hard to deal with being treated and seen as weak because of biases and stereotypes in society. We can work toward a more fair and inclusive society where everyone is respected for their unique strengths and abilities instead of being limited by fears of being weak. By being aware of these biases and how they affect others, encouraging empathy and speaking out for change. Strategy 1. Don't be afraid to say no. Now let's talk about ways to keep from being used by others and how to avoid the risks of being too kind. First, get rid of your fear of saying no. Really think about why the word no feels so heavy. It could be because of early lessons that taught us that being nice meant being accepted. These lessons are deeply ingrained in our formative years and are mixed with a fear of rejection which shapes a belief system that says our worth is based on always being able to accommodate others. However, the philosophy of Stoicism encourages us to question and break down these deeply held beliefs, advocating for a life, letting us thoughtfully deal with life's challenges instead of letting old habits control us. When we set limits by saying no, especially to requests that hurt our well-being or sense of fairness, it's not only a defiance against old fears, but also a deep exercise in self-respect and autonomy. However, it's important to balance our newfound assertiveness with empathy and emotional intelligence so that ISM doesn't just promote his self-interest or isolation, but stresses. The importance of making a positive contribution to our community and the world. True Stoic wisdom means recognizing the real needs of others while also being aware of our own boundaries. This makes sure that our acts of kindness are not only acts of self-discipline but also acts of compassion and understanding, which builds a society where mutual respect and support thrive. It can be hard to learn how to say no in a world where saying yes is often valued and supported. But learning how to politely turn down requests or chances can be powerful and necessary for setting limits and putting your own health first. Here are five important things to think about when you decide to say no. Understand your limits. Know how much time and energy you have to give. Figure out when taking on more work or activities would make you too busy. Saying no is not a sign of weakness. It means you know what you can and can't do. Take time to think. For every yes you say, you have to say no to something else, like taking time for yourself, relaxing, or going after your own goals. Choose activities and chances that fit with your values and goals first, and don't be afraid to say no to those that don't. How to communicate? Well, being honest and polite when you say no to a request is important. If you need to, give a short explanation, but don't go into too much. Being assertive means being sure to say what you need without feeling bad about it. Take care of yourself. 
Making time to say no is good for you. It helps you avoid stress and save your energy for the things that really matter to you. Do things that make you feel good physically, mentally and emotionally, and don't feel bad about putting your health first. Put limits on it. Set clear limits in your personal and professional ties. Be firm when setting these limits and stick to them when you need to. Remember that sometimes saying no to other people means saying yes to your own wants. Being able to say no doesn't mean you're selfish or unwilling to work with others. It means you value your time, energy and health. You give yourself the power to live a more satisfying and balanced life by setting limits and putting what's most important to you first. So, don't be afraid to say no when you need to. Being able to do that can help you feel better about yourself and make you happier. Strategy 2. Pay attention to how you feel. Adopting Stoicism pushes us to be more self-aware and reflective, encouraging us to look closely at our feelings and thoughts, which builds mental strength. This old wisdom tells us to take care of our inner peace by paying attention to how we respond and feel, especially when we do acts of kindness. It teaches us that helping others should make us feel like clouds floating high in the sky. On the other hand, feelings of fatigue, irritation or exploitation are signs that you need to re-evaluate. It's important to know when our contributions, even if they're not required, start to take away our serenity. Recognizing this pain is not lying to ourselves. It is a brave act of self-care that keeps our kindness from becoming a source of stress and a drain on our spirits. Think about yourself first. It's simple to turn into a master in the most obscure fields. Forget about our own health, echoing the stoic values of self-control and pride. Making time for self-care is a must. Stoicism, after all, feeds the soul and teaches us how to protect ourselves. So avoid, take care of your physical, mental and social health by neglecting yourself. Embrace your presence and raise your wants. This method needs your full support. Accept yourself completely, let go of the mistakes you've made in the past and see the coming year as a blank slate for stoic rebirth. Choose an endeavor that is only for your pleasure to show that you love yourself this time. Maintain your boundaries without feeling bad about turning down other people if they ask you to. If requests come into your sanctuary, Help them within your limits while making it clear that your own revival comes first. The fourth plan. Identify the takers. Stoic traits like self-discipline and discernment give us the power to tell the difference between relationships that make us feel good and ones that make us feel bad. Having to deal with people who are always asking for more, whether it's attention, time or resources, is a lot like being a nurturer it wears us out and saps our energy. Stoicism shows us how important it is to have inner strength and reminds us that change is a door that only one person can open. It's not logical to think that we can change other people just by being nice to them. True transformation is a path that starts with one's own willpower, not with outside help. This way of thinking doesn't support being cold-hearted. Instead, it supports a healthy way of deal, dealing with relationships. There is a dance of giving and taking, and being too kind can leave us. Barren while stinginess keeps us apart. Stoicism tells us to use our kindness and giving, but also to use the sword of discernment and cut ties when it's best for our health. It's about finding balance and making sure that our acts of kinness don't hurt our vitality. Remember that the best relationships are ones where both people grow, not ones where one person dies so the other can bloom. Stoicism tells us to find a balance and makes us think carefully about what we do and how it affects other people. It emphasizes the importance of maintaining balance in our grace it asks us not to deplete our resources at the expense of our primary goal of living a full life in various ways, 
but to use our grace wisely, bearing it unremembered only when necessary. His words encourage us to be kind to others and prepare to believe in the profound unity that unites all people. Let us know what resonated with him most in today's conversation. Takamintas, if this post was useful to you and you want to know more about how Oism can improve your life, don't forget to like, share and subscribe to our channel. Your support is important to help us share knowledge and keep doing good things. Let us work with you to build a community of curious minds who want to learn and grow meaningfully. With everything going so quickly these days, it's easy to get caught up in the daily grind and forget about our own mental health. But taking the time to pay attention to our emotions is very important for keeping our minds and hearts in balance. By focusing on our emotions, we learn important things about ourselves and what we need, which helps us make better decisions and live fuller lives. Five important things that show how important it is to pay attention to how you feel. Self-awareness. The first step to becoming self-aware is to recognize and accept our feelings. Being aware of how we feel makes us more aware of our thoughts, actions and responses, which helps us understand who we are and why we do the things we do. Emotional regulation. Being aware of our feelings gives us the power to control them well. We don't have to hide or ignore our feelings. Instead, we can learn to deal with them in healthy ways, like by practicing awareness, taking deep breaths, or asking for help from others. Managing stress. Ignoring our feelings can make us feel more stressed and anxious. By noticing how we feel, we can figure out what's making us stressed and do something about it, like learning how to relax, setting limits or getting professional help when we need it. Better decision-making. Our feelings tell us a lot about what's important to us and what we need at any given time. We can make choices that are in line with our values and goals when we pay attention to how we feel. This makes us happier and more fulfilled better relationships. Feelings are a big part of how we connect with other people. Being aware of our own emotions helps us understand and relate to the emotions of those around us, which makes our connections stronger and our interactions healthier. Finally, noticing how you feel isn't just a way to take care of yourself. It's an important part of growing as a person and being healthy. By becoming more aware of our feelings, we can deal with the problems we face in life with more strength, honesty and kindness, which will eventually lead to a more meaningful and satisfying life.